What's up everybody? So many of you asked for a comparison between the OnePlus Nord 1 and 2. And while it doesn't make that much sense to decide a winner between both, because of course, the technology changes every day and every year, the devices have something new to offer, with better cameras and processors. And you should use them for as long as possible. But the main reason for comparing both of these is to really get an idea of how much things have changed with a newer phone. So let's find out all that has changed with this new OnePlus Nord 2 and have an in-depth comparison with the Nord 1, keeping all things aside like no base variant availability at launch, among other stuff. Before moving further, a tap on that subscribe button will really help the channel out and keep you notified about the latest videos from the channel. Okay, so let's go through everything point-wise and first up the display. So the older Nord had a 6.44 inch Full HD 90Hz display. And this one has a 6.43 inch 90Hz display, almost similar in size and a little here and there. And both of these are AMOLED panels of course. And since this screen side is almost standard these days, both of these are big and not compact at all of course. The display on Nord 1 had a dual punch hole and now we have a single punch hole. And to be frank this one does feel better and less obtrusive. But the panel on the OnePlus Nord 1 has more peak brightness than the OnePlus Nord 2 and that is visible in daylight for sure. Overall this display is free from tint issues and that's a good thing and it's better to have a display without issues nonetheless. The build quality of both of these devices is good and both have plastic frames with glass back. Though it is subjective on whatever design you guys prefer, but the bottom chin on the Nord 2 is slightly bigger than what we have with the Nord 1. Next up the software, and here I have mixed feelings for the OnePlus Nord 2. First up both are running on Android 11, but the Nord 2 is first device that is running on OxygenOS 11.3, which is basically ColorOS with OxygenOS launcher on the top. And that is the ultimate truth, believe it or not. And actually it is neither totally ColorOS nor it is OxygenOS, because it lacks all the in-depth customizations that we see on ColorOS. But if I ignore all that and trust the brand that they will give only good updates, there is more stuff behind the scenes, like there is no option to sideload any update zip or downgrade like you used to do with your older OnePlus phones, which was really very handy. The system updates section now doesn't display a changelog and a little detail that is there goes away when you switch from light to dark mode. Pretty sure it's a bug, but yeah. All of these changes basically mean that, of course, Oxygen Updater might not be supported in future and you might have to wait for the updates. And that is not a good thing. So I hope they will keep all that in mind before changing everything. So basically the software does feel a bit more refined than before and I appreciate it. But all of these changes now come at a cost of how much we had control over things in past. Now coming to the performance aspect and here I would say that the processor on Nord 2 is of course faster and more efficient than Nord 1. But this is where things get a little tricky and the OnePlus Nord 1 had a Snapdragon 765G and that's a good processor in my opinion. Much more capable than what OnePlus did with it. Especially with updates, they just ruined it to be honest. So if I compare the Android 2 scores with the Nord 2, the Dimensity SoC is 2x faster on paper as compared to the Nord 1. And that's a big jump in my opinion. It compares with the likes of OnePlus 9R and phones with Snapdragon 870, which costs quite a bit. Also this one has 6 5G bands as compared to just one on the OnePlus Nord and 9R. But I do see that for some reason on the benchmark scores, the OnePlus Nord 2 doesn't score as high as a Realme X7 Max with same SoC. And I tested it for a couple of times and got a score of around 5,19,000, which is less, right? And the reason is partially because of a setting OnePlus has done. So if you go into the battery settings and inside that, there is this high performance mode. And this will basically make the device use its full power and on that benchmark score came around 6,77,000. And first of the devices like Realme X7 Max 
do not have this kind of setting hidden and they do just fine without it. Secondly, even after that max score, it is less than Realme X7 Max at 7.2 lakh points roughly. So close to 40k points on paper, though you will not notice this slowdown at all. Because this SoC is very efficient, there is a room for improvement on this device. If I compare it with the Nord 1, the CPU temperature went up by 4 degrees during benchmarks on the OnePlus Nord 1 and by 6 degrees on the Nord 2. Anyways, now talking about the games like BGMI. And both of these phones have Smooth Extreme as maximum settings. So no 90 FPS option on the Nord 2 as well as of now. But the gameplay is better on the OnePlus Nord 2 because of a powerful SoC in general. And during my initial testing, I found little to no frame drops with extended period of gaming. And everything was smooth. But the temperature of device while gaming in that high performance mode reaches around 44 to 45 degrees. And that too with just two TDMI matches. Which is a bit quicker as compared to the OnePlus Nord 1. Though with the Nord 1 there are drop frames after one hour or so. And that majorly started to happen after updates. So only time will tell how well this device will age. As even the OnePlus Nord 1 was fine initially. Though ideally the performance on this device will not be that bad. But let's see. Coming to the camera part and this is also a big upgrade at least on paper. So the Nord 2 has a 50 megapixel Sony MX766 which is the latest sensor as compared to the 48 megapixel Sony MX586 on the OnePlus Nord 1. And here are some camera samples that I took from the Nord 1 as well as 2. And yeah, the images from back camera are definitely good from both of these devices if you give them good lighting. But I did find Nord 2 to have better details in quite a few of the images. And you can see the difference as soon as I zoom in on some subjects. But overall the OnePlus Nord 2 produces some great results like this where it captures some good details. Here are some more random shots from the Nord 2's camera and definitely it takes better images overall. On human subjects we can see some good improvements in the rear facing camera and the portrait mode also takes some decent images with good bokeh. Though sometimes even the older Nord 1 can take decent images. So overall yeah the back camera has been improved and this newer sensor mostly helps a lot in getting somewhat better images though if you have a Nord 1 it's still pretty much usable and there is no need to switch over just for the sake of it as you should try to use the device for as long as possible. The front facing 32 megapixel camera on the Nord 2 also seems like an upgrade as the images it takes have a better contrast and details. And as I told in past too, that the OnePlus Nord 1 has one of the weakest selfie cameras. And on Nord 2, it is definitely better than that. And if I do a direct comparison and shots in the portrait mode, well they also look decent. Though the image clarity is better on the Nord 2 of course. Now about some other things that have changed between these devices. Like we have dual stereo speakers on the Nord 2 as compared to a single speaker on the Nord 1. The charging speed is almost 2 times on the OnePlus Nord 2 which is a good thing. And it also comes with a bigger 4500mAh battery as compared to 4100mAh on the Nord 1. Though as of this moment I found the battery drain on Nord 2 to be on the higher side around 7-10%. So the software can be improved by a margin on this. Also there are certain things that you should know. Like the process to unlock the bootloader has changed now. And it is not so simple anymore. So it will affect the overall flashing of custom rooms and even the availability of custom rooms seem like a big question mark to me right now. Because MediaTek phones usually don't have a good reputation with custom rooms and I personally prefer to have them after like one year down the line. Because OEMs don't give quick updates after that, as simple as that. You also cannot install the OnePlus dialer and ColorOS dialer with auto call recording and without that prompt which of course you can do on the original Nord 1. So this had affected a lot of users in past and again they have blocked a way to install those applications. So for now you are out of luck if you need auto call recording or even a usable call recording feature. Something similar is the case for Gcam mod and it won't work properly on MediaTek phones as compared to Snapdragon SoCs. And I am not saying this, Gcam developer is. So to sum it all up, well this device is an upgrade from the original Nord in terms of camera and performance. And if you are planning to buy a OnePlus phone, 
this is a good option in market. But if a custom room and a Gcam mod is something you feel like having, like some other phones in market, well you should have a look at other options that you have. And you can wait for a Pixel 5a or other devices. Because my priorities do include all these, as even phones from Realme and Poco can offer one year of good performance, but after that, well all of these devices might be on the same level. So that's pretty much it for this video and if you do end up liking this one, please make sure you press the subscribe button and like this video if it helps you out. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Before moving further, a tap on that subscribe button will really help the channel out and keep you notified about the latest videos from the channel.